All right, CJ, first super of the day. It says, thoughts on trading Dan Moore for Brandon Cooks? Similar size and speed mm -hmm. as Roman, so I'm a need for both teams. Hey, man, I definitely like Brandon Cooks. We know that's Mr. 1K, wherever he's at, regardless of the quarterback. Now, granted, he is a little bit older. Now, is he 32? Yeah, he's up there. He's about to say he's got to be 31, 32, yeah, right? I think his 1,000-yard streak they, they, they took a little cold is spot. over. <laughs> yeah, it's... <laughs> took a little cold break, a little break. Probably been a season or two yeah. since it, he had It that was thousand. a run, though. It had a run. Oh, it he was. He definitely had a yeah, run. It, yeah. Rams, Patriots, Saints. Mm -hmm. uh, is there another team? Texans. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Four different teams. thousand yeah. yards each of those teams. Mm -hmm. Probably over. That, that's probably over the course of at least five, six seasons. Yeah. But all different style quarterbacks, different style offenses. Mm -hmm. Got traded real fast in each of those stops. Yeah, it's also true. But was always productive, like you said. Each of these places getting a thousand yards, yeah. and you're just wondering, like, but why? Right, why is he so expendable? Yeah. Why? Why do people yeah. not want to keep him around long term? They're like, ah, oh, marry that? Nah, we'll trade him. We'll get him a body. He's an asset. Yeah, he spent first three years New Orleans, and then traded to New England. Mm -hmm. Fourth year, only one year in New England. Then mm -hmm. went to the Rams for two, mm -hmm. and then Houston for three. Dallas last year. You know, he's only thirty one. Mm, okay, he came into the league young. What did he do last year, or last two seasons? Not bad, actually. Six fifty-seven and decent. eight touchdowns. In Dallas's offense with CD Lamb. Yeah. Yeah. That's actually not a bad trade. That's what I'm saying. I, I, That'd be I a pretty like, good I trade. He like that. He could play outside. Mm -hmm. He's already proven. Yeah. And it also That's gives you another another veteran leadership man, um, guy for GP to kind of like learn from as well. Just in not stylistically, but in terms of just the maturity and the approach from a mental standpoint. How do we study film? How do we take care of our body? Things like that. How to handle the spotlight? Um, I definitely like that part of it. I also think of guys that are smaller in stature, Roman Wilson, Quez Watkins, but could very much learn from. Brandon Cook's style of play in terms of because I don't think like I said Calvin Austin is that type of player I just think that he's more of like a specialized I look at him more of like the Mike Wallace type right now but in terms of a Quez Watkins or even a Roman Wilson I think that they could benefit largely from a Brandon Cooks um, and when you're just bringing in talented players I think that he has a lot more to give you than Van Jefferson per se just in the sense of heights throughout their careers and even from a Absolutely. recency standpoint you telling me you know the numbers that what 600 plus receiving yards if Eight i remember touchdowns. yeah that's that's more than what van has given the past you know year i want to say past two years maybe van only had one decent one season, yeah maybe. everything else has been like yeah. two three hundred he had like seven or yeah. eight hundred one year with the rams yeah so that's definitely one of the things that i'm like i think that that would make you know a lot of sense and cost efficient too in terms of just trade options now it's not the splash it's not the dk it's not the you know uh this would be like Brandon getting Cortland Sutton. yeah i think it's right on brand with that i think more upside with Sutton, but i think higher floor with cooks like i know what he is going to be capable of whereas i think Sutton has a chance to maybe surprise us i don't think we'll be surprised with cooks but i don't think we'll be let down with him either Sutton's got a good floor though mm -hmm. Sutton's I think his worst season's like 700 yards. Right. They're both far. good players, yeah. I'm just saying, I think the Sutton optimism... Sutton gets hurt more. Yeah, but our optimism, I think, would be higher for Sutton because he's younger, too. Whereas oh, like, definitely. That's I, what I'm, I'm saying. With you. Yeah. I think he's got a higher ceiling. So, like, and I that think rust connection. He kind of gives us more room to be let down, though, because of the expectations, whereas I think with Cooks, okay, we're I just kind of looking at him like, bro, that's a proven vet. Yeah, it's we more know. like, you come in here, can you give us 700? Yeah. Yeah. I get you. Yeah, based off expectations, mm -hmm. at least. And... If it was Dan Moore, you know I'm not that high on trading Dan Moore right now or anytime close this or anytime soon this off season. Yeah, because a lot of the trade talks with Moore would be you trade him and you just get a future pick. Mm -hmm. But if you could tell me we get a tangible asset back this that year, yeah. improves a need like our receiver room and trying to get a wide receiver too, then yeah, I'd be more apt to giving up Dan Moore than if it was Dan Moore for Brandon Cooks or Dan Moore for Cortland Sutton. Yeah, sure. Yeah, because it's straight up a player that we're going to get back that's going to help us now, not a future draft pick. Kind of the argument we had with TG the other day, where it's like, man, that 2025 draft pick isn't as appealing right now as it was maybe, you know, two months ago. And that future draft pick could always be there. Yeah. Once you see... Like we don't have to rush to do that. Exactly. Yeah. Once you see you got your tackle set up, and if it is Broderick on the mm -hmm. left and Fautano on the right, and more becomes expendable... And you can wait and see what the landscape looks like. Yeah. 
just as the season goes on because if a tackle goes down uh, on one of these other 31 teams then that draft pick might even go up I would in terms agree. of price and, yeah. and value we can get back. Supply and demand, baby. Exactly. Heck yeah, right now it's not a big demand on that. And it, I think it's more valuable to us just to, to keep, keep more around yep. because yep. you want to see what Broderick looks like if we bump him over to left, uh, if anyone gets hurt, just in case. like He's, hey, he's if, valuable if, being if around. Troy is slow out the gate as a rookie, you know, first time transitioning to the NFL, potentially transition to a new position. Right. Like, it's a lot of variables with that. So, yeah. But, no, I definitely like the Brandon Cooks vibe, man. Yeah, it's not a bad idea. And I, knowing that I he's like 31, that. that means that, at worst, you'll be turning 32 at some point. Not 32 when I got to wear, but when you turn 33. So, I like that. Low key, though, that that's interesting. Are there any rumblings about this, or is this just CJ bringing this up, man? You know what? He's not even 31 yet. He's going to turn 31 soon. But he'll be 31 for the whole season, man. See, I like it, though. He doesn't turn 32 yeah. in the middle of the season. That means you're on the right side of that number and the production from this past season. I think that's the big thing for me. I think it's easy to just say he's washed if you just think of his name and say, oh, he's not a 1000 year receiver anymore. But it's like, ah, if you do a little digging, you will see that, yeah, that's still productive. And he's still at a good age. And you're not bringing him in to be your number one. And I think that's the context that matters. If you're bringing him in to be your number one, sure, you're going to, you know, feel like he's letting you down. He might be a good fantasy player for you. Low key. Yeah, that's what happened with the Texans. Yeah, there was no one else there. And yeah, that's yeah. where he was able to pick back yep. up where he left off and get a couple of those thousand yard years. Yeah. 